Okay, we are looking at module 1.2, hardware devices. A lot of what is in this section is covering topics um, that we've done in grade 10 and grade 11, but they are still important to know in grade 12. And sometimes some of the um, things we build on in the knowledge. So what is a solid state drive? And we build on more and more information each year. So Let's start, hardware devices. Remember, hardware is the physical parts of the computer that you can touch and see. So they include your screen, your mouse, the keyboard, camera, the tower, desktop systems unit, your uh, hard disk drive scanner, all those physical components of the computer. In the information processing cycle, we have looked at input devices, and we've covered tons of them, but the most important ones for grade 12 the keyboard, the mouse, touch screen, like on a tablet or cell phone, touch pad, like you would find on a laptop, a joystick, um, typically used by a gamer. Um, you could probably replace that also with things like a controller. Um, if you're playing on a console, like a Xbox, a Nintendo Switch or PlayStation, and a stylus, like you would typically get an iPad with a um, stylus or um, a lot of your Samsung Galaxy Note um, cell phones come with a little stylus. So those are your inputs. So inputs go and have to be processed. So the processing on your computer is performed by the central processing unit and your random access memory. This is your temporary storage area. Your tasks are loaded here and your, your central processing unit is going to be doing a lot of your um, brain work. If you think in terms of a human, the brain, the thinking, um, that is going to be the processing and then we we have to see some kind of output so i'm typing on the keyboard a whole lot of stuff it's going to be processed here and then on the screen the letters will display if i'm typing in a word doc or that document would be printed out i'm using the printer or the data projector would be pr projecting what i'm typing onto the screen uh, or on the touch screen so output is what you're actually going to be seeing what you hear your speakers that kind of thing. Storage. So busy typing out my document using any of these input devices. It's getting processed and I can see it on my screen, but now I want to save it. So I've got different options to save stuff to. And I can also, instead of saving it, say on my hard drive, I could send an email to someone. And then I would want to be using some of these communication media. Please note that since the textbook has been written, um, fiber internet has become far more uh, realistic option for most people um, so we will mention fiber it's just not in the slideshow so information system information processing cycle input identify the data needed deciding how to capture the data planning and creating data capturing forms so using your google forms electronic forms in word um, and instructions so yeah, we've got some examples of our inputs. Output directly sent to storage, directly communicated to other computers, used as input. So yeah, we've got webcam, webcam, speakers, monitor, printer, headphone, printer. Combining input sources and output destinations. Most ICT, information communication technology systems, use multiple input sources and output destinations to enhance productivity. A smartphone or tablet might have sensors to detect movement, on-screen controls. Combining input sources and output destinations, a point of sale system. We did this in grade 11. So if you go to a restaurant or you go to a grocery store or the library, you're going to be interacting with your point of sale system. They use specialized keyboards. The keyboards don't look like our keyboards because they're not typing in letters. Often on a cash register, they would have a whole lot of different buttons that they could push. Um, not as they actually don't do that as much and that they use a scanner, probably not handhold. You'd more likely find that at a library, um, at a shop like Pick and Pay or Checkers, the scanner is actually built into like a little box and they swipe the good past it. Um, and card readers to read your bank cards when you want to pay. Um, restaurants often have keyboards with um, a lot of the goods, the products that they sell on it. So they just have to push the button or touch the screen. And we also get your fingerprint scanner. So point of sales is in a store. 
is the place that you pay for your purchases. It's usually where the till is located. A typical point of sales uh, machine will have a method of inputting the codes of goods purchased, usually barcode scanner. The codes are then used to find more information about the goods, such as the price from a database that you can update centrally. A system to accept electronic payments, so that's how most people pay nowadays. A system to update the stock level of goods whenever they are sold, and possibly to automatically reorder goods that have low stock levels. And that's what your shops will use. A method of producing a receipt for purchases, usually a small dot matrix printer that prints out your little receipt. When a product is sold, the following sequence of events take place. A barcode scan is used to read the barcode number from the product. The barcode number is sent to the branch computer by the electronic point of systems terminal. The branch computer uses the barcode number to search the stock file for the product's price and description, which it sends back to the electronic point of sales terminal. The branch computer updates the stock level for the product to show that one has been sold. The product's price and description are displayed at the electronic point of sales terminal and printed on the receipt. The price of the product is added to the total of the product's process so far. Advantages. Shelves are always well stocked. Fresh food is readily available and products very rarely run out. Customers can be dealt with much more quickly at the checkout. They receive a full itemized receipt. Goods can be paid for using electronic funds transfer or um, straight away debit card, uh, credit card. Accurate and up-to-date sales analysis information is always available for managers. They know who's buying what, especially with um, reward cards like the Smart Shopper from Pick and Pay or Checkers have their own one, clicks, disc, and they all have their card. And it tells them information about you that they can use um, to their benefits. Customer buying patterns can be analyzed and used to target customers with offers for goods and services that they might be interested in. Yeah, we've got Musicians May Connect MIDI Musical Instrument Digital Interface Piano Keyboard via USB board. So they've got an electronic piano that they're connecting. Um, so they would use the computer, keyboard, and mouse as well. Processing only takes place if software and data is loaded into RAM. Uses step-by-step -step solutions to solve problems called an algorithm. Uses data that has been captured into the computer such as via a form of input to create information that can be displayed as output. Processing, se processing involves tasks such as searching, sorting, and mathematical calculations. And these are done by your central processing unit. Storage involves more than just the physical hardware used to store data. It includes choosing the correct storage media, using security to make sure that sensitive data is appropriately protected, creating and implementing a good backup policy. So examples of our input devices, yeah, we've got a whole lot listed. It's a little um, flashback to grade 10, just making sure we are familiar with all these things. Keyboard, most commonly used input device. Type in text, give commands, so you could use your function keys and shortcuts. So control X, Cut, Control C, Copy, Control V, Paste. Two layouts, QWERTY and Dvorak. So this is the QWERTY keyboard based on the first row of keys there. QWERTY, most commonly used. Dvorak, things are changed around and um, not used as widely. Fast way to enter text, so advantage of your keyboard. Easy to learn how to use. Shortcut keys can help you work faster. Limitations? It's not designed to be used with a graphical user interface. So if you think of uh, Microsoft Windows, Windows 10, it's very much a GUI. And um, keyboard's not exactly intended for that. That's where the mouse would be more useful. It takes up a lot of space on your desk. Um, or if you're using um, a cell phone or a tablet, that on-screen keyboard can actually take up a lot of your screen space can be difficult for use with people with disabilities, and you need a certain level of skills to be able to use it effectively. If you were to buy a keyboard, things you'd want to consider, do you want a wireless keyboard versus a cabled keyboard? Wireless prevents cable clutter, but you could run out of batteries and it might not work. Ergonomic considerations, you want to prevent carpal tunnel syndrome or repetitive strain injury, so then an ergonomic keyboard would be useful. 
This is the one that I have on my desk that I use. It's an ergonomic keyboard. The keys are slightly at an angle, um, spaced out for um, the best usage. And they've got big pads at the bottom to protect your wrists. Remember, ergonomics is the study of people's efficiency, their working environment to prevent things, uh, injuries, that kind of thing. Problem solving. So my keyboard's not working. What do I do? So if the keys are sticky, clean it with a damp cloth. If the wireless keyboard's not responding, your batteries probably need to be replaced. If your wired keyboard is not responding, maybe pull out the cable and reconnect it or reconnect it to a different USB port. Sometimes maybe the one USB port's not working. So you put it in another USB port and it's up and running. Mouse, probably the second most uh, used input device. It's made for interaction with your graphical user face, like your Windows 10. You can click, double click, right click, scroll, drag. It can be used whilst pressing a key on the keyboard. It's the most commonly used pointing device. Okay, and I've given you a little bit about your graphical user interface there. It's a type of user interface that allows users to interact with electronic devices through graphical icons and visual indicators. A mouse is a perfect input device, so you can double click on an icon and it will open the program. So it's used to interact with the elements on your graphical user interface, to click, right click, that kind of thing to give commands, cut, copy, paste. When you right click with a mouse, options come up and you can do, sorry, those commands. Advantages, easy to learn how to use, effective way to interact with your graphical elements. Disadvantages, need to use be used when working at a desk. A mouse is not accurate when using it as a drawing device. Stylus is better. So my mouse is not working. What do I do? Sticky mouse, remove dust or lint underneath, use a smooth non-reflective surface, so mirror, so glass. That would not be a great surface for a mouse. If your wireless mouse is not responding, your batteries need to be replaced. If a wired mouse is not responding, once again, just like with the keyboard, disconnect and reconnect. Sometimes plug it into a different USB port and it will work. Make sure with the wireless mouse, um, some connect via Bluetooth, but some connect with a little mini flash drive that needs to be plugged in. And if you haven't plugged that in or you've lost it, it might not work. Touch screen, why would I use one? It's a replacement for a mouse or used in addition to a mouse and keyboard. Best interface for systems with limited options. What is meant by the term touch screen? A display device which allows the user to interact with the computer by touching areas on the screen. A touch screen is both an input and an output device. Input because you're touching the screen, so you're kind of using it like your finger, like a stylus or a keyboard or a mouse. Um, output because it's a screen, you can see what is happening. Advantages, functions as both a mouse and keyboard. It's very natural. Input can be used, so your gestures, uh, pinch, um, that kind of thing. Um, swipe, natural interactions such as swiping, pinching, expanding, easy to use, very intuitive. Uh, you put a two-year-old in front of a device and they know what to do. Increase the space available for the display, increases usability of the device. Disadvantages. On-screen keyboard is harder to use than a physical keyboard. It is. It's much quicker on a physical keyboard. Some touch screens need extra pressure to work. The quality of the touch experience depends on the operating system being used. On-screen keyboards reduce screen display area, and it's not easy to use for certain tasks. So here's some different things we can do with our touch. Press and drag, rotate, press and tap, press, spread, pinch, tap, double tap, drag, flick, swipe. <laughs> Touchpad. So that's like the mouse, but it's on a laptop, or you get these special uh, keyboards. Replaces the mouse in devices such as laptops. Some keyboards come with the touchpad built in. Advantages, you don't have to carry an extra device such as a mouse. Same actions as a mouse without extra surface on a desk. It's not as accurate or precise as a mouse. Difficult to use with drag and drop operations. Difficult to use because of limited size of the touchpad. Scanners used to capture images from paper, 
to capture images of text and convert with optical character recognition to editable text. So you could scan um, a document, say a page in your textbook. And if you've got OCR software, you would then be able to delete some of that text on your screen and you could change it. Where um, if a scanner didn't have OCR software, it scans that page of text, but it scans it like an image. You cannot interact with that text and can be used to read barcodes. You get different types of um, scanners. You get a flatbed scanner. This one uh, works like a copy machine, except it creates a file of the document. A handhold scanner, this one, can be manually pressed over the image to be scanned. A little bit more tricky, not as neat, especially with the scanning. It might not be as neat as a flatbed. Then you get a sheet-fed scanner, has motorized rollers that can feed the source document across the scanning head during the scanning process. Advantages, converts documents into digital format for storage, converts images to editable text. If they have that OCR software, converts old form photos into digital format, benefits the environment as less paper and ink are being used. Disadvantages, the quality of the image depends on the quality of the original image. If the original image is scratched, uh, tatty, not as clear, it's not going to come out clear. Can be affected by dirt or fingerprints on the glass or dust on the sensor. Works best with single pages. Books can be difficult to scan and it can take a lot of time to scan things. Problem solving, my scan is not working. Well, there could be errors in image size or quality. Check the settings of the scanning software. Non-responsive scanner. Well, check if it's actually switched on. Have you pushed the on button on the scanner? Is it plugged in? So is the cord from the scanner going into the computer? Is there a separate cord that has to be plugged into the wall? Is that switched on? Is it probably connected to the USB port? Maybe that USB port is malfunctioning, so you plug it into another USB port. The lock switch is switched off. So switch it on. Digital camera used to capture images, capture video, alternative to scanners as barcode or QR code readers if the camera is integrated with a smartphone. QR code, quick response code, is a barcode like logo that can be scanned by smartphones, tablets. These codes can contain a variety of information which they direct the user to once scanned, including web links and text. So you scan it and it takes you to a website. Um, you also get apps like SnapScan, and they use that to process payment. Um, so QR code is very useful. Advantages of your digital camera, your photos are in digital format as opposed to being printed out. It's very easy to take a photo. It's not expensive because in the past you take photos with a physical camera, then you'd have to get the photos printed. Um, do you want to print all those photos? There's some photos that aren't great. You have to pay for them. You can view them instantly on the camera. You don't have to wait to take the camera to get the photos printed to see if the photos came out nice. It doubles up as a good video camera, so you can record things as well. It's often built into devices, so built into a cell phone or a um, tablet. Photos are very easy to share. Disadvantages? Photos are easy to lose along with the device, especially if you haven't backed them up. The quality of the photo depends on the quality of the camera. And you'll know, um, especially if you use cell phone quite a lot, um, if you compare photos taken with maybe the first cell phone you ever had to taken with the cell phone that you have now, you often see a difference in the quality of the photos. And that is due to the camera quality that improves over time. Factors, buying decisions. Okay, so I need to buy a camera. What are things I need to consider? The number of horizontal and vertical pixels in the image. A minimum of 300 dots per inch DPI to get good images for printing. 72 DPI dots per image suitable for on-screen or web display. Image quality depends on the color depth. The higher, the better. 32 bits is currently the maximum. I will look that up and research and change that number if it's not the maximum. It's been three years since I've taught grade 12. Sensor size, the bigger, the better. ISO rating. That is the camera sensitivity to light. Webcam, internet video communication. So being able to Skype or Google Meet, Zoom, 
live feeds of events, remote control security cameras, log onto a computer using facial recognition. Those are some uses for webcams. Webcam is a video camera that feeds or streams its image in real time to or through a computer to a computer network. When captured by the computer, the video stream may be saved, viewed, or sent on other networks via systems such as the internet and email as an attachment. So you can um, log on to a video camera that will show you whether what Table Mountain looks like. Is it cloudy? Um, you can go, there's often webcams situated where you can go see what the surf is like. Um, do you want to go to the beach to surf? Is it a good day to do that? Advantages, they're cheap, they're small, they're often built into your portable computers, they allow for video calls um, where you can see the person that you're talking to. Disadvantages, they're very low resolution, it's not often a good image, and it has to be com connected to an ICT device to work, it can't just work by itself. Problem solving, so it's not working, check if it's plugged in. Is it switched on? Has it been selected as the current camera to be used by the software? Especially if you've got two different ones, um, check that the right one has been selected. Webcam software can be used to test if the webcam is functioning properly and to troubleshoot problems. Microphones. They record sound, uh, communication. Microphone attached to device via USB port. There's an example there. Uh, your phone can be used as a PC mic. Um, they're using Skype. Microphone built into a headset so you can talk to someone. Advantages, records dictation, gives voice commands, adds the input of sound to a computer, uses software involving sound editing, analysis, or manipulation. Disadvantages, often your built-in microphones don't provide high quality sound. You need to have the ICT device present to record sounds and it can be very difficult in noisy environments or very windy environments. Output. Output is how an ICT device shows the results of the processing that has taken place. Here are some examples of output devices. Screens, interactive feedback, extra visual alerts for hearing impaired people. So you could have something flashing on the screen Types of screen, you get a laptop screen, a monitor screen, touch screen on smart devices, TV screen. Um, you get different types of monitors, an LED, light emitting diode monitor, LCD, liquid crystal display. LED monitors are the latest type of monitors. Like an LCD, it's a flat panel display. Instead of using cold cathode fluorescent backlighting as used in LCDs, Primarily the display of the LCD only, but the backlighting is done by LEDs. LED monitors are said to use much less power than the old, 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 big, fat, bulky CRT ones or the LCD. They are more environmentally friendly, so that's why they're gaining in popularity. Uh, liquid crystal is still one of the most advanced technologies. There are two types. These are active matrix or TFT and passive matrix technology. TFT, so your active matrix, is more secure and reliable, gener generates better picture quality. Passive matrix has a slow response time and is becoming outdated. Factors, so you need to buy a screen. You want to look at the number of horizontal pixels multiplied by the number of vertical pixels. That is referred to as resolution. So it will show you as a number like that. Yeah resolution. Image quality, color depth, the higher the better. Pixel density, higher pixel density makes the display crisper, clearer, easier to read. Refresh rate, the higher the better. Contrast ratio, the relationship between the darkest black and the brightest white. Low contrast ratios produce soft muddy images. So problem with screen, the colors are faded, too strong or muddy so adjust the settings. The image is blocky or stretched. The resolution settings are probably wrong, so you would change that. The image is tinted purple, blue, yellow, or green. The connection is faulty, and a pin in the VGA connector is probably bent. Um, maybe the cable is not in quite correctly. That's the blue cable at the back, although not all screens have VGA. Some have display, um, some are HDMI. 
but generally with the VGA, if it's not screwed in tightly and properly at the back, um, you could get some different colors popping up. There's no display. The power is off. It's not switched on. The connection is not in properly. The computer um, is not cable or cable is not recognized. So you'd want to check that. Maybe pull out the cable, put them back in. Speakers, headphones. They are used to play sound, provide audible feedback to the user. So noise you can hear, sound you can hear, provide extra notifications or alerts to people with visual disabilities. Headphones, you can listen to sound without disturbing other people. Speakers, a group of people can hear the sound. You can listen to voice messages, interact on Skype using speakers and headphones. And headphones make it possible to use mobile devices on the go, especially if you have to make a lot of calls or Zoom messages. Then you're able to use your um, device to do that. Limitations, sound quality depends on the quality of the peripheral. So if your cell phone does not have good speakers, you're probably not going to hear the greatest sound. If your headphones are not the greatest quality, you're probably not going to hear great quality. To play loud enough for a group, you will need additional audio equipment, such as an external amplifier, especially if you're in a, a classroom or in a hall, especially, you will need um, more sophisticated equipment. Problem if your speaker or headphone is unresponsive. They could be plugged into the wrong jack. Remember, there are three at the back. There's pink, blue, and green. So you need to make sure it's plugged into the microphone, into the headphone jack and not the microphone jack. That's the pink one. You want it in the green one. Computer sound settings may be low or on mute. That often catches me out. Mute. The computer might be set to the wrong sound output device, so you haven't selected the correct one. Speakers that need power might be switched off or not plugged in. And that one often catches me out as well. Whoops. So it's probably a good place to start. Is it switched on? Is it on mute? If not, then check. Output device, have you selected the correct one? And have you plugged it in the correct jack? Printers, laser, inkjet, dot matrix. Prints black and white or color documents, black and white or color, mostly used as your point of sale and it would print in black. Your laser is uh, super fast, high quality text and low running costs. Inkjet is cheaper to buy and it takes better photographic. Uh, if you're printing onto photographic paper, your inkjet is going to be better. Dot matrix is cheap, low running costs and can create carbon copies. So two copies of the document um, often used in um, doctors, dentists, that kind of thing, receipts. Laser printer, expensive to buy. Not the best uh, printing, not the best for printing good quality color photos. Uh, toner is not absorbed by the paper. But if you want to print black and white, lots of pages, laser printer is the one to go. Inkjet has higher running costs. It prints slower. Generally, print quality is not as good as that of a laser printer, especially if you're just talking about general black documents. Dot matrix, it's a low print quality. Multifunction printers, this is the fourth type of printer, is an office machine which incorporates the functionality of multiple devices in one. So you can scan, photocopy, print, and fax, although fax is kind of being phased out. People don't really use it as much. Um, so it's kind of a four-in-one, uh, what it can do. But generally, um, with most of your multifunction printers, what they do with the fax to email is that you can scan something and email it straight to your computer, which is really useful. If you buy a printer, what do you need to consider? The speed, how many pages per minute does the printer print? Color, you would generally have a separate cartridge, the separate cartridges for color. So you would have the CMYK, um, C, Cyan, One is magenta, M's for magenta, Y, cyan, magenta, I think black is K. And generally, if you have four separate cartridges, it's going to print a lot better than if you have one cartridge for all the colors. Um, it's not um, going to print as well. Resolution, higher resolution gives a better image. So you want to think about that. And cost per page, how much does it cost per page? Um, if you're printing in a school setting where lots and lots and lots of pages are printed per month, you would need to not use a home printer because the printer would actually break. Um, so 
you don't want to think about that. Paper, type of paper for high quality printouts. Can it only print A4? Can it print A3 as well? Can it print cardboard or just paper? Can it print back to back or just front? System compatibility, can it be used with the specific OS? You've got a MacBook and now you want to print and the printer only works with Windows. You need to check that beforehand. Wireless capacity, built-in wireless functionality, Bluetooth, Ethernet port. Ethernet port, we connect it to the internet. Um, if it is wireless, you can just connect it up. Bluetooth, if you don't have to run cables from the printer to your computer to print, that is a lot easier. Generally, printers are not mobile, but you get those small little ones that people use to print those tiny little pictures on. Um, that would be an example of a mobile printer. LCD projector, so project a large image of the display onto a surface to share with a large audience. Think of a school, we use projectors all the time, allows the display to be viewed by a large group of people. Quality and clarity is not as good as a high quality display monitor. A lot of people are replacing um, a pull down screen with actually a TV screen to get better image quality. The contrast ratio results in muddier images. Normally limited to a 4-3 aspect ratio, but sometimes you can get a 16-10, which is better. That's your um, HD resolution. Storage, hard drive, HDD, hard disk drive, external hard drive, flash drive, optical media, so CD, DVD, Blu-ray disk, and solid state drive. Storage device is any computing hardware that is used for storing, porting, and extracting data files and objects, can hold and store information both temporarily and permanently, can be internal to the computer, external to the computer, or server, or any similar computing device. Hard disk drive, if it's not working, slow and unresponsive system, your disk could be fragmented, use a disk defragmentation utility to rearrange the files, to place scattered parts into whole chunks for faster access to the files. If the storage space is full, delete or remove some files, get extra storage, you can plug a second hard drive in, add another hard drive, use cloud storage devices or cloud, sorry, use external storage devices or cloud storage uh, to transfer files that don't have to be always stored on the computer. If files are corrupted, use the scan disk utility to fix the disk. Maybe caused by an improper shutdown, you didn't shut down the computer properly, there was a power failure, a program crashed, and you would need to um, try and uncorrupt those files. Corrupted files, file, corrupted files are computer files that suddenly become inoperable or unusable. You can't open that Word document. So hard disk drive, you store and carry media, data and software around with you, store backup safely away from the computer, add extra storage to the computer without physically opening the computer. Advantages, large capacity, portable, ease of use, high speed, reliability. Limitations, not physically as small as a flash drive, as vulnerable as hard drives and can be damaged easily because they are mechanical and magnetic. So if you drop your hard drive, it probably won't work and all that data is gone. Flash drive, used to carry data and software with you, make backups, distribute data and software. Portable, super portable, fast data access, cheap to buy, larger capacities and optical media. It's an industry standard use, so everyone uh, uses them. So every computer is going to have a USB port, they're reliable. Uh, they're very easy to use in terms of adding and deleting files. That's not difficult at all. And you don't actually need an extra power source for the flash drive, you just plug it in. It's easy to lose. It's more expensive per gigabyte than hard drives, lower capacity than newer hard drives, and it's got a limited lifespan. How many times your data can be saved on them before you're probably gonna break it, they fall apart. They're very easy to damage. Optical drive, so DVD, CD, Blu-ray, used to distribute software, distribute content such as movies, backup, uh, movies and music, and to backup data. It's very cheap, portable. It's industry standard used to use a CD or DVD. They're very slow, very easy to damage. One scratch can make the disc not work. They have not a large storage capacity. 700 megs for CD, 4.7 to 9.4 gigs for a DVD. It's not as easy or intuitive to write to as a flash drive. 
and some machines like netbooks do not have optical drives. Most computers nowadays do not, are not sold with um, optical drives. So it's not working. They often fail to experience problems because they get dirty. That could be the CD itself or inside the drive you need to actually clean it. Clean it just by wiping it with a soft damp cloth. It's very easy to damage and get scratched that CD and DVD. It's difficult to repair. You usually have to replace it. Writable and rewritable discs can get damaged by heat or cold. And you can't actually fix this damage. Once it's damaged, it's damaged and that dot is gone. Solid state drive, most important thing nowadays um, in terms of storage. Much faster, there's no moving parts, so it can't be damaged by being dropped or moved while in use. Much more energy efficient, durable, it runs quieter. It's a lot more expensive. They've got smaller capacities than a traditional hard drive. You can get them from eight gigs to two terabytes, but size is increasing rapidly. Um, often that's the easiest upgrade to a computer. Your computer's slow, you put it in a solid state and the computer's gonna start up a lot quicker. Communications media, we've got 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi router using cellular data. And you've got your ADSL modem router using ADSL landline connection. So 3G, 4G, 5G is coming. You can access the internet wherever there's cell phone reception. Easy to install and use the USB port. Small enough to take with you for internet access on any computer. 3G, 4G network is pretty fast, but it's very easy to get lost or stolen. That little dongle, you can lose it really quickly. It's not always reliable as a fixed line connection. Uh, it's going to depend on the coverage and strength of the signal. If it's a very cloudy, stormy day, the signal's not going to be as great. ADSL, a digital link to the telephone company's network, includes the functionality of a small switch, Wi-Fi. So your ADSL can have Wi-Fi functionality. Uh, you can make and receive phone calls and be connected to the internet at the same time. It's cheaper than 3G. It's more stable. You don't need cell phone reception. Wireless connection to the router for to share an internet connection so people in your house can connect via Wi-Fi. Um, you do need specialized equipment, so you would have your telephone. You would need a dedicated line um, for that ADSL. Um, Fiber is the same, so you'd have to pay for that. Speed drops the further and further you are away from a telephone exchange. It's going to get a little slower. Designed for fast downloads and slow uploads. Okay, and with fiber, fiber is the new one on the market. Um, the prices have come down a lot in the last year or so. Um, fiber is probably the fastest. And if you can also use Wi-Fi with fiber, um, but if you plug in the, the actual ethernet cable to your device, you're gonna get much faster uploads and downloads than you would with ADSL or even 3G, 4G.